Welcome back to part two of how to get your veins to stick to your arrows. I recently did a video on why it's important to use an accelerator and to experiment with different types of glue. So with all that aside, I want to talk a little bit about why your veins might not be sticking to certain brand arrows and why you might be having a hard time getting your veins to stick depending on what kind of fletches you're using. I've got a variety of different arrow shafts here. I've got the Victory TKO. We've got an Easton Axis 5mm. We've even got some Easton Genesis arrows. We've got some full metal jackets. We've even got some super old Easton aluminum arrows. I've also got some Easton arrows that are painted with a wrap. When you're using an arrow wrap, you don't ever want to use any kind of a heavy solution, acetone, or anything like that when you clean your wraps. Just a clean rag, maybe some soap and water will work, dry it off real good, and your veins will stick to your wrap just fine. That gold tip. And we have some Carbon Express. So this is a Victory TKO, and if you look close, you can see that the carbon is a little bit different. They're using a nano web. And it's a little more porous than, let's say, an Easton arrow. Now, Easton makes their arrows a little bit different. And we've also got a Carbon Express. And the reason I'm showing you this, every brand arrow and every manufacturer uses a different compound when they produce their arrows. So depending on what brand arrow you're using and how it's made, if it's a nano web or a straight cut carbon, the manufacturers are still using a compound and we don't know exactly what those compounds are. So we have to experiment with different kinds of glue and figure out which glue works best per brand arrow. Now, same goes for these fletches. I have a couple different veins here. And this is a blackout vein. It's pretty flexible. It's pretty thin. And it's really porous. The compounds are different in this vein than, let's say, a blazer vein. Here's a blazer vein. It's a little thicker. It's a little more dense than the blackout vein. So it's not as porous. Here we have a PM20. It's a little bit smaller vein. It's a little bit more dense than the blackout or the blazer vein. Same goes for the AAE Max Stealth vein. So we have to understand that the more porous a vein is, the better the glue is going to stick. And it also depends on whatever compounds they're using to manufacture these things. Now I'll have to admit, the blackout veins and the blazer veins will pretty much work with any kind of glue and they stick to anything. So they're just a little more porous than some of the other manufacturers. Now the AAE veins, they're not as porous, they're pretty dense. And uh, sometimes you'll get like a powder film on the inside of the vein. That's why it's important you want to use your acetone or your primer pen to get these things as clean as you can get them. One more thing I want to touch base on. We all know that before you fletch an arrow, you want to clean your arrow shaft. Uh, if you're using aluminum arrows, whether they're dipped or painted, don't want to use acetone on your arrow shaft if it's painted or dipped. Because it'll just rub the paint off. So just use some soap and water on those type of arrows. Now when you're getting ready to fletch these arrows, it is okay to use acetone on your fletches. Get those fletches as clean as you can get them. So that's a little bit more explanation on fletching arrows, different kinds of shafts, different kinds of veins, when to use acetone, when not to use acetone. I'll still always use an accelerator. So there you have it. I explained a little bit between different arrow shafts, nano web, straight cut carbon arrows, aluminum arrows, painted arrows, dipped arrows, a couple different styles of veins. Hope this helps a little bit more. Appreciate you guys. Hit that like, leave a comment, please subscribe. See y'all later.